Hello, welcome back to the Age of Bison YouTube channel with another casted game of our 2v2 tournament. And before we begin, I'm here to advertise that um, we are going to have a slew of videos coming out this week, specifically um, in the first week of November. And as we're going to go through our quarterfinals and our semifinal games. And so be, you know, staying tuned to um, your YouTube feed as, you know, we don't want to miss any of the action here. We have some really great games lined up that we have been casting and recording. And so we're excited to be pushing out all that content to you all this week. And so that's going to lead us into Sunday, this Sunday, November 6th on Widgie's Twitch stream, 1 p.m. GMT. Be sure to tune in because he will then be casting with us our final 2v2 best of five games. And I'm not going to reveal who those teams are just yet, but uh, you'll have to stay tuned to figure that out. But make sure to be tuning in on Widgie Stream 1 p.m. GMT on November 6th, this Sunday, to see the finals. And so we have all these games lined up for you guys. Um, hope you're enjoying all the Age of Empires 3 content. There's going to be a ton of it coming out this week. And let's get into the action in this game. In this one, we are going to have Lopsided Fluff as Britain and then Nicias as Spain. And then on the other side, we have Crispy K using Japan, oh so deadly Japan, and then Branchi as the Dutch. And this is on New England. So very beautiful, fitting the fall weather complement that we are experiencing now in November. And uh, yeah, and I am now, uh, by the way, I'm your host, Sir Shark Dad. And I'm going to be joined here by our resident owned ca caster, Dunamai. Hello, friend. And if you want to go ahead and give me your initial thoughts about this matchup and talk a little bit about the map. All right. So uh, I think a lot of Adrian Empire 3 players are familiar with New England. It's one of the classic maps of this game. Uh, excellent water play with a huge amount of whales and fish, good trading post, uh, even some sheep. So whatever is your economic plans look like you can do them on this map uh as for the civilization matchup you you have on one side uh spain and brits uh that can favor a quick early attack with the deadly brit h2 and for example the deadly spanish fast fortress but you can also have a logistician which niches is famous for and on the other side branchy and chris k with these uh, more defensive boom oriented civilization so we may see this you know uh timing battle of can spain and brits crush this uh, japan and dutch uh duo before it just takes off and uh, messes up yeah absolutely I, I i completely agree with that analysis and so what we saw in the uh in the interim as you were speaking we saw both Lopsided Fluff and Nisius taking an initial trade posts here on the right side of the map. And let's go ahead and take a look at the decks really quick. Since I'm on Bronchi right now, we'll go ahead and take a look at his. A little bit of water play here. Um, not going up with each uh, bank upgrade, now sending in three merchants, which is pretty standard. A um, lot of wood, age two, so that will help with his, because you don't really want your Dutch settlers to be um, gathering wood necessarily, because um, you want that wood to be building banks. Um, so quite a bit of options here in H3 as well. And all oh, my favorite Bosniaks. So very excited. Hopefully those guys come out into play. Looking over at Crispy K as Japan. I would say, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Dunamai, but pretty standard Japan here. Um, you know, not too much. Intervention is a little bit different, which is going to give him a uh, shipment of units from the consulate. So that's going to be nice depending on what he chooses to use. And then maybe mm -hmm. some, maybe a little bit of water play, but not heavy water decks out of these te out of this team specifically yeah uh, and we can see that they expect to contest water but not take it and we know Nicius is definitely going to play for water as he has every single time he had the option so let's take a look at his deck and there it is right so fish market schooners um and it does look like a logistician deck wouldn't you agree yes 100 percent logistician with the water card pretty standard water deck nowadays for, for spain i would say yeah, and then also Spanish Gold is now starting to make a comeback again as they nerfed it and then nerfed it and then reverted it. So I don't know what their intention was, but Spanish Gold is now um, in full swing again. And so looking over at Lopsided Fluff's deck, as he is now going up with um, the Governor, pretty standard here. And 
just pretty much the same Brit deck that we've seen from him throughout the tournament. Um, options all around, right? He can go for any of any sort of unit compositions. Interesting to see the exotic card, woods card, but that would be good for a, a, a mana boom as that would increase the wood gathering. Siege Archery is a very fun card, so I'm very interested mm -hmm. to see what he's going to pick. Usually he's gone Musketeer, um, but, you know, they have all these options. Pretty interesting to see is also the fact that he's going for hardwood, but not uh, the Virginia Company. So he's going to pay full price for his matters. Right. Logistician Age Up, like we expected, Anisius storing two um, shipments. That's the power of Spain, really. Um, I did not get to see what. Um, we're going to just gonna assume Quartermaster. Yep. And then we see the crates of wood on the ground. Standard. Um, really good early bank from him. Little. Uh, Explore action here as they're going to go ahead and take this settler. Pretty good. And then um, we have Crispy K going up with Tory Gates. Um, again, standard Japan getting that samurai as well. So I'm very interested to see, you know, how early, you know, with Logistician, I don't know exactly how much, um, and maybe you can kind of give your thoughts onto this, dude, am I, um, how much Spain would be able to really kind of pivot the economy to water play when you have Logistician, which is typically orientated towards the rush. But I guess it could be economically potent, right, with the infinite wood cards coming in? Yeah, so this is actually a standard uh, that of meta build for water now, because you get the the wood instantly, and all, pretty much all of the fishing cards are age one cards. So you also get some extra resources with those, and it tremendously helps. For example, you have a, an extra 100 wood with schooners. So if you already have your docks, well, that's pretty much two boats covered right there. But we see that maybe Nicias is going for the brain, actually. Um, because he's kind of uh, doing a bait and switch. He's training to Hussar and he's sending gold. So maybe Team Crispy B is going to expect... Do they, do they see the... The stables, if we look at the Fog of War. Yeah, let's take a look. So, they do not see the stables, but they obviously they see the barrack and, the, and yeah. the outpost. So, and he does have the bank wagon card. So, here's the thing. I recently casted a game with McCleaves and, I believe, MFD, also playing against Team Fluffius. And what was interesting about that is that this is kind of a mirror to that. Obviously, different sieves. But in the same exact area, this team has put down a forward base. And then we saw now their opponents. And now the Dutch are not going to build forward necessarily. You wouldn't expect that. But they could. And Japan could as well. And it seems that they're once again kind of, in a way, forfeiting a little bit of the map control, which is going to be important in New England because you want to control these chokes around the lake. Um, and so I'm, I, I feel like this is kind of a repeat of what we've, what we've seen previously in the tournament. Um, so it's a pretty interesting choice on their part. Now looking over here, we have Nicias kind of checking to see if he can maybe get a raid in. Lopsided Fluff kind of dancing around with his Musketeers. Pretty good combination. We have Japan going Yumi, um, which is good, I think, except it's going to be hard for Hussar to Hussar on a micro level to kind of protect each other. Uh, but I guess it is possible. And, and Dutch kind of are beginning to avoid the Skirmisher start more and more often. Yeah, but there's not enough mass. There's not enough as hard to protect. Not at all. And so we... already getting on top of those settlers. Mm. Oh, good. Pikeman pop, but a micro's a yeah. little weird. Miniman uh, is also being called as well. See if he can get the Yumi to kind of get to work here. And, and I don't know. Did you see how many he lost there? Not really, but this red Hussar, yeah, good call by this just to kill it. Yeah, that was, because, was a good snare. Yeah. Good pullback on Bronchi's part. Very tough. And this is a tough micro situation. I mean, you don't know exactly what they're going to go in terms of, you know, the scouting probably would have been important to see the double stable. Maybe they could have anticipated something. But it's tough with Dutch, especially in the early game, because they don't have access to their halves, right? And they can't, they don't necessarily have a fast fortress option because they have to get the banks out. So you're left with Pike. Um, as your anti-cav option because you're stuck with skirms. So it, it's it's really is a tough situation in a Hussar push for the Dutch. Yeah, and you, and you can't just, you know, have these 300 gold instantly deposited in your in your bank account. 
right. that allows you to just pop those 10 Hussar, which is a build that DCS often does, very strong opening. And add to that the fact that he has the water cards. You have this, you know, kind of a situation where you think he he's going to play uh, a more, you know, co-focused build, and then you have genocide in your base and all hell breaks loops. Right, right. But the dynamic is is quite interesting. Oh, very decently sized mass with the Yamabushi here coming in from Crispy K. Now the thing is, is that he does have these aggressive shrine placements. You know, in, like we were saying before, you have two boom sieves. So the Dutch, all they need is time. So as he's sending in these wood cards and he's just getting his banks up, it becomes more and more difficult, especially because the logistician is on a timer. Because eventually those XP rates, they become too much, right? Like the XP to get the next mm -hmm. shipment becomes too vast to the point that the logistician bonus that you would have gotten early, if that makes sense, tends to run out. Um, and so really, I think they just need to play for time. Uh, while this is true, also remember he has a water logistician deck so he could transition this you know logistician power play into a water boom uh helped with these age one fishing cards so uh crispy did not but must not entirely rely on that right and also the difficulty of keeping these shrines up he's already lost a couple but he still has quite a few up there um still kind of dancing around this four base Ooh, Branchy pushing in a little too far. You need to keep these Yamabushi up just because that is your uh, lopsided fluff just taking great shots on. Really good micro to take advantage of the situation. They're trying to pull back these forces. Nisius is going in for the kill, it looks like. Yamabushi and Samurai are out of just completely <laughs> at the front of the line here. Pikemen are not turning around, and they're just going to be taking those casualties as they run away from this fight. Oh, that's so rough to see. They, like just did not let their anti-cav, you know, play front on that and, and try to take out some of those Hussar. And now Nisius has a huge, I mean, early Hussar mass here of 23. And that's going to be a fatal Revenge. mistake. That's going to be a fatal mistake here because, you know, well, I mean, that's good for the... Uh, looks like he did get a sentry pop there, but he allowing those your anti-cav, you know, your melee anti-cav to just take musketeer shots from lopsided fluff's part is, uh, it's tough. And then now, Nisius getting right on top of these, these Yumi archers with the Hussar is, is gonna be it. And, and then you have, yeah. I mean, more Hussar to try to get on top of these musketeers. It's, it's not gonna work. Especially since they are sandwiched between musketeers and Hussar. Yes. So this is going to be hard. I mean, he did take a lot of XP from that with Story Gates, but uh, I don't know what kind of pop can really save you from like, I don't know, 30 Musketeers and 10 Hussar. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because it's like 39 here and then he's probably and he has these upgrade cards already in so these are essentially h3 and ugh, all these villagers going down the lopsided fluff volley fire here as he just continues to attack move inside the base and, and just continuing to punish crispy k it, it's tough because he's exact, exactly what you know what unit composition are you going to go with h2 spain has so many options right britain has a lot of options as well um, and so the Dutch are just extremely limited on, on unit options um, in a way that the other players are not. And so I don't know exactly, maybe they needed to pick a little bit different or... Well, to be honest, you could go logistician yourself as Dutch, which gives you, which gives you access to the Harbor Deer That's true. Uh, in H2. Yep. Uh, but then you miss the all important 400 wood and Pretty when you pick yeah. a, a duo of Civ, like Dutch and Japan, you're not here for the rush. Like, you're here for the ego. Yeah, but now it looks like he's going to have a little bit more of the scrums coming out and trying to pull these merchants back to make sure that they're not going to be caught out by these this Hussar. But, oh, that Vil pull is rough, and, and a few of them are going to end up going down. And it looks like Nisius and Lopsided Fluff are just going to continue to extend this fight all the way through and just trying to idle these mm -hmm. economies and, and just punish their opponents. 
Yumi are doing Yumi and skirmishes are doing a great job. Oh, what it, what are you doing? Attack move. Uh, oh, Attack move being busted. Oh my gosh. Oh. This is that's, so hard to watch. That's, that's hard to watch. Hey, listen, nobody listen, we were not we never claimed that this was gonna be a, a clean game all the way through, but that that is just one single micro mistake, you know, in a fight that was looking decent. Um mm -hmm. was gonna be and I mean now this is a wipe. We have a full on we have a full on wipe. Now that doesn't mean the game is over, but it, it does create some difficulties and, and now we see mm -hmm. Can we check on the left? I see uh, an alert being released. Is there? Is there? Oh no, it's just. Never mind. Just the idle explorer doing the shrines, and he's got a few idle bills there on the left. But he is now at 47, compared to Nicias is 38, and Dutch is gonna go lower, 23. But he also doesn't have a four bank. Um, usually, you want to have a fourth bank at this point in the game. Um, and Crispy K with only 17, just a massive, massive settler loss. Um, in that early fight, so that's really tough to watch. And now, Nisius is going to continue to siege down these shrines. Um, let's take a look at one side of Fluff Floating 2, and then now here it starts, as you were talking about it, the the water boom now as he's transitioning. What what great timing, honestly, economically to understand, you know, when when to push, and then, then deciding to pivot to a longer game strategy. Mm-hmm. And this is where the logistician can really transition into a, a late game plan, actually. So they're really locking uh, Chris PB out uh, of any potential, you know, way out of this game. Definitely tough to watch. He's de and he's already got the uh, three trade post control that's going to be delivering wood. So that's going to continue to feed into the boom, um, as well as. Um, you know, just taking down these shrines and, and going for more XP during these fights is definitely going to help with the shipments coming in. Um, and I'm wondering if he's still... Yeah, the primary focus hasn't even really been the, uh, at this point, the infinite resource cards, but rather now switching to the economic upgrades. I'm wondering how Bronchi and Crispy K are going to respond. So now Bronchi now sending in team um, infantry hit points. Um, so that's going to give an extra plus 5% to his, and he's going to go for a dual composition of Hussar and Skirm but kind of limited in both and still not that fourth bank um, coming in. Um, I'm wondering if he sent in a unique... No, he did not send the unique church card despite building a church, but probably for the XP. Um, and then as for Crispy K, he's just going to struggle because now at this point, Lopsided Fluff has, I, I would say, reached critical mass of 42 fully upgraded H2 skirms. Yeah, Musketeer again. Oh, sorry, Musketeers. I apologize. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the scores, they have like 15 Ks called it. Like at that point, Chris PB is really hoping for like a bad fight or an attack move mistake or something like that. To really try and save the game. But right now, it's really uh, Fluffiest Team's uh, games to lose. And now look at Insult to Injury Bishop coming in with Lopsided Fluff. Um, he most likely going to go ahead and send in the two Falconets next. He's sitting on three shipments, so we're going to see some back-to-back -back shipments. Falconets right away. Musketeer combat, and then 1,000 wood. Whereas Nicias now going in H3 as well. Admiral of the Ocean Sea. Going to once again commit to the water play, except not too much over here, except for maybe a small card that gave Japan a couple of fishing boats. It's kind of down to Bronchi now, I would say, um, in which he he really needs to he really needs to get his economy into overdrive. He needs to be making more banks um, in order to be able to counter and take advantage of any sort of bad play because Crispy is still struggling at 25, 25 vils, and really been. And on the north of the map, we yeah. have a forward TC, which is almost like disrespect at that point. Yeah, just continuing to turn up the heat, you, taking advantage of infrastructure, um, putting down buildings, making sure you're getting that line of sight, and then you're you're just you're continuing to place that pressure just by having the buildings, just like in that forward base, immediately taking control of the game and controlling the tempo, and and honestly, completely blocking off any sort of use that Japan would get out of the shrines. So it's not only the loss of the villagers, but it's the loss of the shrines that now you see mm -hmm. the Japanese eco is just dead in the water. And uh, again, 
really patient moves by uh, Team Fluffius. They don't want to lose the game on a bad engagement, taking their time. As you said, the Falcon achievement is here. You can siege from a, from a distance, make sure you can protect these Falks and win the game uh, with, uh, with artillery. Upside of Fluff floating a ton of coin. And now, and I, sorry. And I think also they destroyed water on the, the 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 remaining three fishing boats. Oh, but I see Bronchi's boats in there. I would say he needs so to maybe he needs to get him into play. However, yeah, uh, maybe he's waiting for a fight to happen, so they're distracted. But that's ambitious and here it is oh and there's canoes as you're talking about canoes the fight here it us. comes Mises is absolutely willing to take this fight pound to pound he's got veteran hussar against just normal hussar still both of these teams are or sorry this uh, you know you have Bronchi and crispy case still in age two so this is just going to be just a just one large push the skirmisher mass is going to be able to counter these musketeers however there is going to be absolutely no anti-cav on this team um as as these ashigar are just going to get absolutely blown apart by the by the falconets and crispy k being a, a gentleman saying that was fun i would not call it fun if i was on the receiving end of this but he's a better man than me and best of luck with the tourney and there is Crispy K going ahead and resigning, and the Hussar are going to land the killing blow, and then that is the game. All right, Dunamai, what are your kind of initial thoughts coming away from this? Really interesting game. Uh, we said at the beginning, uh, this is either, you know, well, either Britain and Spain will allow uh, Japan and Dutch to boom, or they will break it. And uh, it seemed that Dutch and Japan could not boom their way out of this game. And uh, Nicias with his really strong 10 cav logistician uh, BO, uh, again carrying uh, with, uh, with this huge you know, sweep of cavalry, uh, helped with the lopsided flood, very strong you know, uh, musketeer push right after it to secure the, the map control Nicias gained. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, basically, just snuff the opponent. You know, Britain is extremely strong age two. Spain is extremely strong pretty much in most stages of the game, to be honest, but um, especially in age two when choosing a logistician um, and, a, and a unit composition that can change up, um, you know, with so many options. And so um, picking two boom sieves into that is, is tough. Um, you know, I'm not sure. I think Japan can play age two. Um, but they really want to have their upgrades coming in um, and take advantage of the consulate. And it seems like that's what it was, his deck was set up for. And then Dutch is like, they have to stay in H2 a little bit longer, but they don't want to stay in H2 at all um, when you're the Dutch and you want to try to get to H3 very quickly. You want to have a clean semi-FF and, um, and then move on uh, just to kind of get access to your writer. You want to get access to um, your mm -hmm. mercenary cards. So the fact that they weren't able to do that essentially just kind of, like you said, just killed any sort of potential coming into that. And you can see the villager count loss here. I mean, and, and consistent in, in making more, but, you know, at that point, when you have your opponent already putting so much pressure on, there's no chance to really recover. Indeed, and really i think it came down also to this uh early fight with the hussar with the pikemen coming a little bit too late uh imagine if uh you see the bronchi still had the the four hussar when the eight pike showed up to really snare this this early hussar mass that would have been a different story you would have, maybe you would have allowed you know dutch to, to get to H3, to replace this pikeman anti-cav by a rider anti-cav that can, you know, hit and run this chasing Hassan mess, and we have an, a completely different game. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. There was that middle fight, and I and I believe I was commenting on it, that they left their melee anti-cav 
out in the open, and lopsided fluff was able to take full advantage of that situation mm -hmm. um, by placing the musketeers forward and getting the shots in um, to make sure he, they took them out. And so I thought they had a decent sized mass there with the Yamabushi, and then he also had the pike um, still alive from that shipment. They needed those, mm -hmm. um, and and in that case, your micro just has to be on point. They have to be able to just set those off to the side, continue to engage and kite with your range, and then once the hussar commit, then you can commit those those units. And and like you said, I think I think that, and then the unfortunate attack move with the Yumi, just walking right into a mass of musketeers. Um, you know, mm -hmm. is, I think that's the second dip, yeah. like fourteen minutes. Mm -hmm. It is, it is, and and <clears throat> just tough to watch and. And once again, Micro wins games. Um, no way around it. Um, do you have anything to add to that before I uh, sign us off? Uh, no, except that it was, again, a pleasure casting with you. And uh, I really look forward to seeing the finals. Absolutely. So once again, speaking about the finals, just want to remind everybody that 1 p.m. would you stream GMT on November 6th. Tune in to watch the finals of our 2v2 tournament and then eventually we'll be announcing the next tournament because the content does not stop in the age of sombros discord um, our discord link is in the description below please come in and and uh and uh, join this community help us grow this wonderful game uh, if you enjoy the age of bison youtube channel if you like the content that we're putting out we please ask that you like you comment and you subscribe always helps with the traction we love interacting with this community and we will see all of you in the next one